relationship with Jesus was, well, unique. You see, I was given the responsibility of raising Jesus as a child. I was his earthly father. Um, my name is Joseph. I was a carpenter by trade. I made a living with my own two hands. God had given me a talent for building, and I could take wood and nails and construct all kinds of useful objects out of it. Now, it all started when I first fell in love with Mary. Mary was such a special girl. She was beautiful to look at, but more importantly, she had such a sweet spirit about her. It was almost impossible not to fall in love with her. You know, I don't think I can even remember anyone saying anything bad about Mary. But, but I'm getting ahead of myself. You see, the marriage between Mary and myself was arranged by our families years ago. It was just the custom of the day. But before we had the opportunity to exchange our wedding vows, it was discovered that Mary was with child. Now, now, I knew Mary's character. I knew the purity of her heart and her lifestyle. She would never do anything to dishonor God, or to sin against Him, or dishonor her family. So when I heard that she was pregnant, well, I was completely shocked. And then, the more I thought about it, Feelings of hurt and betrayal just overwhelmed me. And in my humanness, anger overtook me. But, but I had been raised to be honorable and just. So I decided I would honor my commitment to marry her. And then I would just quietly send her away. So once I had finally come to grips with the situation I was in and the decision I had made, an angel came to visit me in a dream. Now the angel told me that God, God, the creator of the universe, he was the father of Mary's baby. The child that she carried in her womb would grow up to be the savior of the world. But it would come at a very high price. <laughs> now, I remember when Jesus was still very small, uh, maybe about four years old. That boy used to follow me around everywhere I went. I love that. Well, we were in the workshop, and I don't even remember what I was building, but Jesus, he was right there, wanting to learn. You see, I was teaching him to be a carpenter, just like myself, and he was always there, always willing to learn, very good student. But on this particular day, I was very busy trying to complete a special project. You see, one of the more wealthy men in town had hired me, and he was paying me very well. But I had to have this item finished by Sunday. It was to be a wedding present. So I was so busy, I, I just didn't feel I had the time to instruct Jesus on what I was doing, much less on how to do it. I hope, no, I, I'm sure he understood. Jesus was never one to complain or cry or pout or even demand attention from others. So he just busied himself about the workshop cleaning up, organizing, just finding anything he could do to find something, a reason to be near me. Now, it was getting to be evening. The, the sun was coming in through the windows and uh, shadows were beginning to form. You could see the dirt from the floor and sawdust just kind of swirling around. And as, as I was working, I noticed I hadn't heard Jesus in a little while. So I stopped working and I went over to see what he was doing. He was just sitting on the floor. Now, now, as I mentioned, it was getting close to evening. I had two windows in the workshop, and, and the shafts of light were coming in, and Jesus, he was sitting in the exact spot where the shafts of light crossed. And I looked at his face, and there were tears streaming from those perfect little eyes. The look of hurt and confusion and bewilderment on his face. It was nearly more than I could stand. In those tiny, precious little hands, Jesus held three long, ugly spikes. He looked up at me with tears in his eyes. He said, why, Daddy, why? I couldn't answer him. I did not know what the future would hold. 
But I'm convinced that he did it. 